What's happening guys? Today we're going to go over how to get multiple hookups at once, whether you're doing a little bit of fly lining, trolling, or a little bit of bottom fishing and a whole bunch more. Sometimes you're in the same area as somebody and they just seem to always catch more fish than everybody else or at least more than you. Sometimes it's just a change of tactics that you need to develop or learn to start catching more fish because you're not in the wrong area, but you just maybe need to make a few adjustments. 90% of the fish are caught by 10% of the fishermen. Of 100 boats going out on a Saturday, 80 of them are following the crowd. 10 of them shouldn't be past the inlet. Eight are dialed in for the most part, but two are professionals that are relentlessly dedicated to putting fish on deck despite any conditions, day in and day out, adapting and using past experience. Sit down, strap in, and get ready to take some notes. We're gonna take the fishing game to the next level. Welcome to the Obsidian Fishing Podcast. Every once in a while, I've had a breakthrough when it comes to like a species of fish where I've learned, you know, whether it's from somebody else or me trying something different, is a development of tactics. Not so much the location or the lure, it's how you're employing and capitalizing on the bite when the fish are really firing off. You know, like one of my breakthrough days was we caught 14 wahoo in one day. Never would have thought I would have caught that many wahoo. I've seen it. We, when we lived in uh, Moorhead City, there was a charter fleet, and those guys would catch, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 wahoo in a day. And I just I didn't understand. We were out there. We saw them all day. The, you know, we're doing the same thing as them. We're trolling ballyhoo with islanders at seven knots or whatever and they just seem to always catch more fish and we went fishing with a mate who used to work on a charter boat and that's when he showed us or showed me <laughs> say what i was doing wrong you know and sometimes people overcomplicate it and it's just the slight little things that make a huge difference up until that day that we caught 14 wahoos the most i'd ever caught i think was like four or five in one day and all it, all it took was just a couple little changes here and there and to really pay attention to water depth, direction of troll and the water temperature. And it may seem obvious, but some people don't really key in on specific little things and that can make all the difference in the world. I'm gonna start with pelagics. Definitely wanna mark the spot when you hook a fish, the water temperature, the direction of the troll and the depth and you want to pay attention to the continent if you're fishing the continental shelf you want to pay attention to are you on the shallow side the deep side are you like right on that break how far are you away from where the water temperature change is you know if the gulf stream is out there it, or if you're fishing close to where the gulf stream meets the atlantic ocean <laughs> as i like to say so you can start putting the pieces together for what the fish are keying in on that particular day. We'll start with tuna real quick and we'll hit on fly lining. So fly lining is super popular on the west coast. East coast it works too if you guys can find a spot where those tunas are you know popping up every once in a while the blackfin tunas or the bluefin tunas I've seen it do it on the east coast but yellowfin, bluefin, all that kind of stuff on the west coast. If you're fishing on a boat I think you're wasting your time if you are fly lining and not casting anywhere except for where the fish are literally foaming at or in the strike zone where those guys are chumming all day. If you're fishing off the side of the boat, way on your face, yeah, you might catch one here or there, but those fish are going to be keyed in on exactly where that ball of bait is because they're going to be chilling. I mean, look at like some videos on YouTube and down in Panama or Costa Rica or whatever, you'll see those tunas are pushing that bait up to the surface and pinning them there. And they're just coming up, taking swipes at the bait. So if you're not in that bait ball where those tunas are coming up and feeding, I think you're wasting your time. You'll still catch fish here and there. You know, that school sometimes, especially as the boat starts to pick a few off, will kind of get spread out a little more. But your odds of catching fish and catching a lot more fish is gonna be right in that school where those, that school of bait fish, they're, they're throwing 
chum into in that same particular area, your odds of getting bit is gonna go way up. One day I was fishing on a grande and we, the boat caught 96 yellowfin tunas and I caught 23 of them because I kept casting into that one spot. So give that a try next time you go yellowfin, bluefin tuna and they're on the fly line bite. If you're trolling though, anywhere else, you know, West Coast, I've seen some guys troll more like in the center consoles, that type of thing. Uh, but you know, it's particularly on the East Coast, how guys target tuna is trolling. That's a primary method, unless you're up North and they're doing, you know, some chumming. But anyways, Outer Banks, North Carolina, the tuna are absolutely notorious for getting multiple hookups or every single rod just getting bit at one time. <laughs> and uh, the key to that is to keep moving. So don't, one of the, let me back up. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they will get bit and immediately clear all lines and then just cap, you know, reel, on, reel up that one fish and they're, they're trying to capitalize on that one bite. But the best thing you can do is actually just keep moving and you'll increase your odds of getting bit because sometimes that school comes up and it takes a minute for everybody else to check out, you know, your spread and then they're going to come up and bite one, two, three or four, you know, hopefully all six, seven, eight lines that you're pulling at once. Shifting gears a little bit to the white marlin and the sailfish. That's another one where you got to keep moving. If you get bit, just keep moving, give it some time. Like, especially if you're fishing tournaments, I used to fish, um, you know, a 60 foot Jarrett Bay. Sometimes people really want to, you know, just clear the spread and, you know, catch that one fish, put your hand on the leader, get that release, move on, right? But one of the best things you can do is just keep trolling, keep your, especially your dredge out. That was one thing I noticed. If we cleared our dredge too fast, we wouldn't get that multiple hookups. So keep, you know, if you've got some, a daisy chain or dredge or whatever you got going on, keep that in the water for a little bit. And odds are, if you're bit on one, you will get bit on, you know, one, two, three, or four more. I've never had a four header on a white marlin, but from what I hear, that's how the guys who do win these tournaments have a ton of releases in one day. That's how they are fishing. And one sneaky tactic is to have a light line ready. And when you get bit, just throw that thing in the water and throw it in free spool. And sometimes, you'll have fish checking out the spread and they don't see something that they want. We've caught a lot of fish that kind of see that bait that's not acting like the rest on that free line. And we'll get a double, you know, an, another hookup on that fish that wasn't interested in anything that we had in the spread. Moving over to mahi or dolphin, whatever you want to call them. They're one of my favorite fish to catch. We'll start with free lining. Sometimes you just bump into that school and it's like a hornet's nest under the boat and you just catch them as fast as you can. One key thing on that is if you are bailing dolphins, keep one in the water. What we would do is hook one and just stick it in a rod holder as long as it was on a circle hook and just leave that one fish in the water and all the rest of the school would just stay there under the boat. Now, if you're having trouble getting that one fish to bite, what we like to do is have some pre-cut chum and I'll just throw it in the water. If it's not pre-cut, you could just throw whole squids or what, you know, whatever you got for bait. But I like to throw like little pieces in the water because A, a smaller bait, they're more likely to eat. And then when you do throw that free bait in the water, that'll get them fired up and then you can throw one in with a hook. But I would not recommend, if you don't have one hooked up already and you see a school of dolphin, just worry about one guy hooking a fish up at first. I've seen it where, you know, everybody's grabbed their shit and thrown in the water and all of a sudden the dolphin just spooked or won't eat anything. So give them free bait first, then let, you know, one guy hook one and then everybody else can start going to town on them. But make sure if you aren't leaving that rod in the water, like in the rod holder, like I was talking about, just make sure somebody has one hooked up and is keeping that fish in the water until somebody casts out and hooks another one. You guys can kind of take turns or rotation cycling through who's catching fish. Mahi, I've also seen if we're, you know, fishing an island or whatever, we're trolling that day. They will 
like one fish will, will hook and you know be reeling in on spread and when they're about halfway in and we've kind of given up on pulling because like once we hook one i like to keep pulling for a little while but if it were like not hooking anything up then i'll start clearing some lines and we'll start doing i, I like about a 45 degree turn and start reeling that fish in when they're they're about halfway there i'll take a naked ballyhoo and just put that in free spool throw that back sometimes that'll pick another one or two up as well and then also you can try that chum tactic because sometimes that fish like i said they're gonna be hooked up and he's bringing a school of friends with him and if you throw that chum in the water you can get the rest of them fired up so as long as you guys are working together as a team you can have that one fish hooked up somebody's reeling in on a 30 50 wide or whatever and then you got another guy throwing some chum and some spinning rods out but if you don't have a team of like experienced fishermen i would not start mixing spinning rods up with trolling gear because that can get kind of hectic really fast so uh definitely know who you're fishing with and like if they can handle the, the organization aspect moving over to wahoos so one of the biggest learning points that i ever had on wahoo was that the males typically school up out in the deep water on the shelf or the continental shelf as i like to say females kind of push inshore and those are going to be your onesie twosies but they're going to be bigger and i'm not saying you won't catch big wahoo out on the continental shelf but typically when they showed up in the fall for us the majority of the males were you know in the 30 to 50 pound class were out on the continental shelf anything over that you know 50 45 50 mark you know most of them we caught inshore so we we obviously we want to catch more wahoo i'd rather catch two fit you know 40 pound wahoo than one 60 pound wahoo but i'll definitely take a 60 pound wahoo so back to the learning point is the planer rod when i would get a bite on the planer rod on a wahoo you know they would hit that planer rod pop it so, you know sometimes they hook up you know you just back the drag down and sometimes you got them a lot of times they're coming through swiping you know your bait in half they're going to come back and eat the half what i would do is always put that planer rod in free spool and hook that one wahoo we'd fight it and that was that i had always thought that's just how you fish a planer rod and because i'd always caught wahoo doing that well this guy Jarrett, we went fishing with we uh were fishing a 32 regulator and i was we were just talking he's like all right if we get a bite on the planer rod and you don't hook up just crank it to the top as fast as possible i was like well, why would we do that i'm like i always put in free spool man I'm like i always catch that fish and he's like trust me we get a bite on the planer rod just crank it up as fast as possible. I was like, all right. So I did. And he explained to me that, which proved to, or which worked later that day. Fish bit the planer rod, cut half the bait, and cranked it up to the top. And as that planer rod came up, it that one fish that bit that planer rod bait, it actually brought the school of male wahoos up with the planer rod and the bait to the spread on top and we were getting multiple hookups after that planer rod had been cranked up to the surface because those fish were at a depth and they weren't looking up necessarily at the surface. Well, once that one fish got fired up, planer rod, you know, brought that fish's attention up to the surface and then the whole school started biting because that one fish was already fired up. So that was a game changer tactic for me with Wahoo fishing that I had no idea of. And it was like, oh, that's what separates these charter fishing boats that do this stuff every day from like the weekend warrior where you guys are trying to be like those charter fishing boats or catch as many fish. And some, some guys really have it dialed in and figured out. But those charter boats, man, if you can get with a guy who's worked on one or maybe talk to a mate and see if you can take him fishing on one of the off days that he has because a lot of those guys that are mating on the boats those kids obviously probably don't get to go a they're working on the boat b they don't get to go fishing with a whole lot of other people because they are busy so if you can catch them like maybe on an off season 
or if you can just have them come over to the house and show you some tips, tactics, that kind of stuff, it's well worth your time. Those mates are usually dialed in with everybody else on the waterfront. They're gonna share tactics with each other and they have knowledge that can completely change how you fish or where you fish and can make all the difference. Moving over to Cobia, you'll see like kind of a common thread with the chum and the reason I keep bringing it up is because it works so well with a variety of fish and I found it to be one of the best tactics that you can use to catch more fish. So Cobia, like I said, if you're sight fishing and one guy hooks one, you can throw chum in the water, get the other ones fired up. And then I also like to have a light line um, ready to go. So if you're sight fishing, I like to have like an eel or a live bait because those fish are typically near the surface of the water. And if your buddy hooks one, you're fighting it. A, as soon as he hooks one, I like to throw a live bait in that general area because most of the time when there's one cobia, there's a second, third, or fourth cobia. And then B is sometimes when they're cranking them up, you'll see when you go to like, you start seeing color in the water, he'll bring a couple of his friends with him. So that live bait works really well. And then the bucktail, if it's like deeper water situation, it's, if you're like catching them out on like some live bottom, something like that, it, it's kind of hard to get multiple hookups with cobia, but it doesn't hurt to have a bucktail because like if your buddy's cranking in a fish, you see some color or you see, you know, that cobia has got some friends with him. You can drop that bucktail out in front of him as long as you don't get tangled up with your buddy. He'll kill you if you... <laughs> He loses that one because of you but i like to maybe throw it out and if that fish is kind of you know in a general direction i'll throw it out and kind of work it towards my friend where he's cranking that fish in or you could try like a weighted live bait as well that may work you know i just wouldn't go too heavy on the weight because then that kind of kills the natural action of the bait bumping over to grouper one of the biggest keys here is speed. You have to be fast. When you are grouper fishing and the bite is on and it's firing off, you've got to get to the bottom quick. you got to be cranking up quick. You want to enjoy the moment, but get your pictures later with a grouper because when they turn on on a spot, that sometimes there's a very short feeding window where those fish are firing off, and it's kind of like a compound effect where like one fish bites and then two fish bites and then three, you know what I mean? It's when those bottom fish get fired up, you want to be getting down quick. So a having a real has a high gear ratio B having, you know, your rigs ready to go in case you do break off or need to change rigs, having your rigs pre-made ready to go and use the same bait. If they're feeding on live bait, drop a live bait down. You know, if they're eating squid or like sardine, you know, I, I like sardines the most or like a filet of fish from like a trash fish that you caught. But anyways, if they're keying in on a certain bait, make sure you're dropping that bait. Ask your buddy, hey, what were you fishing? And then drop something very similar or the same down to the bottom. Lastly, if you're anchored, you gotta pay attention to where you, know, you hooked up. So what I would do is, even if like you're kinda swinging away from the spot, it wouldn't hurt. I would cat, kinda cast my rig towards where my buddy hooked one if we were kinda swinging away from where he had just hooked one at. And lastly, we'll talk about some redfish in shore action. So if you have a school of redfish, that is where you can kind of play a game of catching some fish, but not catching too many fish. Because that school of redfish, unless they're really getting pressured, you can come back and catch fish out of that same spot over and over and over again, at least for a little while. And my experience from what I found is like that school of redfish Will stay there but if you just wail on them one day let's just say you catch 20 30 redfish that school is probably <laughs> gonna move out of there but if you catch three four five fish and then leave that school a lot of times you can come back later that week the weekend whatever and that school will still be there because they did not get pressured too hard it depends on where you're at speaking like where, where i used to catch redfish was like a shallow marsh and they would be you know loaded up in like a certain bay or on a particular spot on the beach if you're fishing live bait or dead bait you can use that same tactic you can throw chum out and get those fish fired up 
And what you could do, redfish, fish in shallow water, obviously you don't want to get right on top of them. So if any of you guys ever seen it, there's like a cheap baseball bat, it's hollow, and you just cut the top third of it off at like a 45 degree angle, throw a bunch of bait in there, and you can use that to sling the bait. Look that up online, plenty of examples, super easy way to sling bait out away from the boat. Unlike a lot of fish too, redfish, if you hook one and break them off, at least that initial hookup. So like I've fish, been fishing Carolina rigs for redfish and you'll go to hook them and they'll cut you on an oyster rock or whatever, like right off the bat. A lot of times those fish will eat again. Like <laughs> trout, once you hook them, they're, they're done. But a redfish, you can hook again. You just have to give them some time. Match what you're chumming with if you are. If you're not using chum, I like to cast out away from the fish. Either way, I like to cast out away and kind of work my stuff into it. If you're fishing live bait on a Carolina rig and you have no idea, or dead bait on a Carolina rig and you have no idea where those fish are at, don't go too heavy on the weight. I think a quarter to maybe half an ounce is all the weight you need, is given there's no current. Um, you don't want to make a huge, gigantic splash because I've done it plenty of times where I'm fishing a bigger weight so I can get a little bit more casting distance. But, you know, I throw it and I see that redfish get spooked out of the bay and you, you never catch them. If you're fishing bait and you know where a school is, if you have a, if they're kind of, a lot of times they'll tend to meander in, in a certain direction in that bay, back and forth on a bank, or they'll be working at Oyster Rock, something like that. I like to cast out in front of them, work your bait into it. If you cast right in the middle of them, a lot of times, you, sometimes when they're really firing off, you, you'll catch a bunch of those fish like that. And it just does not matter. They're chewing the paint off the side of the boat. But most of the time, I like to cast out in front of them, work my rig into them, and that's like the best presentation. You want to get out in front of them of where they're going because they're looking forward. And if one's feeding, they're going to be feeding what is in front of them. If you're surf fishing for redfish, though, good tactic is to idle into the school and have some guys on the bow just casting out in front of the boat and staying as far away from as, them as possible. If you can't do that because of the size of the waves, we would kind of approach it at an angle. So if the waves are breaking here, you know, we're kind of like keeping the bow towards the waves. And as we're passing where those fish are at, those guys would cast out. And then as soon as they would hook one, we'd point the bow of the boat into the waves Keep the motor at idle. Don't give it a bunch of gas, that, gas that'll gas spook the school. And just start pulling away from the beach. That way those guys can fight those fish. You don't spook the school. And once they catch those fish, you guys can turn the boat around, go catch some more of them. All right, guys, we're going to call it a wrap on the redfish for today. If you guys have any questions, feel like I missed something, let me know. Also going to do some fishing this year out of San Diego. If you guys want to go with me, make a little group trip. Let's do that. Let's start planning, coordinating what boat. Uh, I got the weekends nailed down. They're on my Instagram if you want to check it out. Uh, please like, subscribe, share with a friend. Until next time, boys. Keep those lines tight. Later.